if you look at the joint continental strategy that Africa uh, has put forward, it is underpinned by the, the need for strong cooperation, the need for strong collaboration, the need for strong coordination and communication. Those are the four Cs that guide our continental strategies, which was endorsed at the highest level of the continent since February. So I think uh, the continent recognizes that uh, the victory, the global victory against COVID has to be guided by global solidarity, uh, because this is a global crisis. And no country will be considered free of COVID if any country in the world is considered still has COVID infections. Um, and again, a continent of Africa of 1.3 billion uh, cannot be excluded in the equation in this whole discussion of uh, eliminating COVID in the world. So I think, again, we strongly adhere to the principles of coordination, cooperation, and, and, uh, and collaboration to seek solutions that will help us move us from this is this is a war of survival for the world i think we've seen how the damage that covid has imposed on our economies on our lifestyles and on and and, and and the number of deaths that the covid has in the cost us so again this is not a fight that uh, any single individual or region of the world will win without a global coordination and solidarity with respect to who i think our position is very clear that um the the world has always been a safer place our global health problems have always been solved adequately only with the leadership and strong leadership of the United States and of the World Health Organization. Absolutely, no doubt about that. The, um, the HIV AIDS crisis, uh, they, they will begin to turn the, the, the fight against HIV AIDS only when the United States launched the president's initiative uh, uh, to, uh, uh, against HIV called PEPFAR in 2002, 2003. And the continent of Africa has been benefited from that uh, uh, effort. I think the United States has invested over 70 to $80 billion in fighting uh, HIV AIDS on the continent, which the continent is extremely appreciative. Through solidarity and cooperation, the Global Fund was established in 2001, 2002, and it has been a game changer. It's probably a good example of how we should coordinate efforts to fight against COVID-19, which is the greatest challenge the world is having in the last 100 years. So I think uh, the strong WHO and the strong United States leadership is the key ingredient uh, for us to come out of this uh, extremely devastating uh, crisis. Earth crisis. And Dr. Nkangasang, in terms of the, this issue of global solidarity, we've, for years now, we've seen a key feature of international uh, trade agreements uh, that where the pharmaceutical companies and other corporations push the importance of intellectual property protections, obviously for patents, especially of, of medicines. Do you believe, given this crisis, that there should be a suspension of these of this uh, race to control a particular uh, vaccine uh, and, in essence, make it uh, available uh, d generically from the start to at least stem uh, this uh, epidemic with possibly five or 10 years down the line, companies then trying to benefit once the, uh, the world situation has stabilized? I mean, thank, that's a very important question. I think um, we, as the Africa Centers for Disease Control and the African Union Commission, issued a statement in that uh, regard just uh, a few weeks ago, uh, to be very specific, on the 25th of June, where we convened a, 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 a continental international conference on, on COVID vaccine. And that meeting was chaired by President uh, uh, of South Africa, His Excellency uh, President Amaposa, and the Chair of the African Union Commission, uh, uh, Excellency Musa Faki. The, the essence of that meeting was clear, that we have to discuss the issues related to intellectual property. We have to discuss issues related to access to vaccines, almost in a timely fashion, if they're available for a continent of 1.2, 1.3 billion. And exactly what we, in that communique, we, uh, we touch on the Doha uh, declaration, which speaks to this intellectual property you just mentioned. I think we are always reminded, always reminded of what happened in 1996 when the HIV drugs were available, and it took us about seven years, up to 2002, before they became accessible to the continent of Africa. I think if that situation plays out now, and you can see that the future of the continent will be completely on the balance. You see that the development of the continent will be on the balance. So I think, again, we are calling for a, a global solidarity to make sure that 
just speaking about access to vaccines in developing world and in Africa in particular is just not a nice word to say. It's not just a feel good word to say, but it's a reality. And we are we're developing our own strategy called uh, uh, African Access Vaccine Strategy underpinned by access and development of the vaccines for, for, uh, for the continent.